Hello guys and girls of the 1970s under the dome, welcome back to Encased and playing hardball. So I have to say it is really cool and we have found the, the, the situation here uh, under the Nashville facility in the exploration uh, site where they found this artifact or a similar artifact this year looks like smaller right so we found that area uh, well it's it's a bit unclear if we actually if we caused the catastrophe or maybe we prevented it or whatever but there is um, a form of maelstrom going on yeah this one here is broken and apparently we've seen we've seen some uh, entities who are probably alive or something and it appears as if we were actually uh, trapped inside of this maelstrom some kind of psi phenomenon or something so it's really science fiction it's really cool and a lot of time apparently has passed um although here like the cave yeah so no one is here but the machinery is still here nothing to be seen here what's that just an artifact yeah a fan or something fan of some sort nothing here a passage cannot be used with the servos, uh, servo shell equipped oh no they are taking our servo shell away oh no that's so sad. Let's check it out, right? I have the feeling they are going to take the servo shell away. Yeah. Oh yeah, so actually like the, all these pla plates or the, the floor plates... Uh, yeah, there's nothing here huh? otherwise. Okay. Oh no, it's all it's all destroyed. We had a cave in. Repeat. We have a cave in and we are actually trapped inside the cave. Except for some crack over there apparently. That's the map, yeah. Passage in the rocks. That's all. There's nothing else here. Here with this machinery some drill caterpillar drill oh no well we can get out of here at least but we have to keep oh no we have to leave our soft uh, here our servo shell behind well then if that's what we have to do then that's what we have to do That's sad. <laughs> well, but it's also totally cool. Like this is, and this is the prologue. So I guess this was the prologue. And we got a glimpse uh, at what is possible, what we could have, an MK3 servo shell. It was nice having you, buddy. <laughs> and now we have to leave you behind. That's so sad. Okay. The board of directors believes in the bright future of the C-12 facility. According to the calculations of the analytical department, the relic production at the facility will increase by 700% by 1979. It is obvious that by this moment, the Nashville base will no longer be able to satisfy the housing demand for all, for all employees, so we are already building a modern residential complex for 3,800 people. The construction of the main building, a skyscraper with an observation deck, is almost completed. The first apartments will be ready by the spring of 1976. The dome is your new home leaflet. Mm-hmm. Observation deck. Light. Okay. Bright light. You shield your face with your hand. After the darkness of the cave, it feels like broken glass rubbed into your eyes. You slowly spread your fingers. At first, you can't see anything, only a blind whiteness. Gradually, 
the pulsating light resolves into the outlines of a red rock and a tall white structure at its foot. Oh. The screen on your Kairos blinks. The system reports an error while trying to update the built-in atlas. When the maps reload, the icons are gone. Only a single marker indicating your location remains. Well, you're still near Nashville, at least judging by the coordinates. Interesting. A lamp. Oh, that is looking different, differently than uh, the narrow passage into the cave is hidden behind thorny bushes and sharp stones. We can't crawl back. Why not? We need our servo shell. Oh no, it is gone. I think it's gone forever. No, it will just remain in there. Like a nice memory. There's the radio crackles with interference. Employee currently deployed to the oh. danger zone must leave. Encouraged to seek asylum. The city is far enough from... Don't panic. Our scientists and security specialists are closely monitoring the maelstrom phenomenon. Confidence in our new committee authorities. The problem will be solved as soon as is feasible. These guys are hostile over there. Oh, a stormer. Oh no, distracting looks. It's hard to turn one's gaze away from such a horrific physiognomy. And that? Oh no. They are infected. They are the infected people, or they they are the uh, influenced people, or whatever it is. Oh, I guess they they shot this person here. Where where's the blood? The blood just vanished. The Jupiter Moon car, one of the most common versions of the Jupiter Moon. This is the 1975 model with no extras and the cheapest color from the catalog. We lean closer to the radio embedded in the car's console. The emergency message is now coming through louder, but not any clearer. However, we could try to adjust the frequency. Now let's rotate the, t the tuning knob. We rotate the controller. The emergency message is now coming through loud and clear. The radio chitters. Attention! This is not a drill. In the area affected by the Maelstrom Megalo Anomaly, Scenario 6C is currently taking place. Remaining in the yellow sector is prohibited. Employees currently deployed to the danger zone must leave the area immediately, following standard evacuation protocol. The announcer, vo announcer's voice is briefly replaced with static, <laughs> then resumes. All new, uh, all new committee citizens are encouraged to seek asylum. The city is far enough from the yellow sector to be considered safe under current conditions. The distant wailing of emergency sirens can be heard through the speakers. The announcer keeps talking. Don't panic. Our scientists and security specialists are closely monitoring the maelstrom phenomenon. Any registered movement of psifrons will be closely monitored. We urge you not to spread false rumors about victims among the population. Maintain confidence in our new committee authorities. The problem will be solved as soon as is feasible. Attention, this is not a drill. The message begins again. Okay, let's hit the dashboard. The speakers fall silent for a moment, then begin to crackle and skirr with double force. The text of the announcement is still barely audible in parts. Hmm. Okay, our scanner is still working. So apparently there is the this network is still there. Ah, this guy got some stuff. Letter on project emulator stationery. Okay.
On the emulator project, sorry to bother you with this matter, but there is no one else I can ask. In a couple of hours, Nakamura will announce a General 6C class alert. The city will be closed and all field work halted indefinitely. Now the control posts are still a mess. It's critically important for us to obtain data on the dynamics of the psyche field structure near Maelstrom, and ideally inside of it too, but I won't ask for the impossible. A reminder, please be careful. I have no other employee as experience and none I can call a friend either. Henrietta R. Okay. She had a very manly voice, right? Okay. Oh, we can actually maybe make some order. In our in our backpack now that we are at it all these all these bolts lying around this is an empty air gun national security master key well can stack that Yeah, and I, uh, by the way, off camera, I uh, I had stolen a little bit more from the people who were uh, standing around, uh, and you noticed that the health was uh, up again, right? And yeah, I got the shear blade back from Louise. Louise, that's Enagon. I wonder why it doesn't stack. Okay, well, at least at least we have some food with us. Yeah, and I broke open the uh, the vending machine, so I as many of them as possible. Mm. But we only have a little bit of water, but 12 eggs, they are still fresh. Fresh. It's interesting. So, it mu we, mu we must have been in some form of time loop or whatever. So... We thought this is this was only possible in some science fiction movies, right? Or some science fiction literature. So this guy that's Ricardo Alexander, 70 years old, White Wing Emulator Project Deputy Head of Laboratory, cerebral hemorrhage resulting from C overload. Oh my goodness. So he's been killed. Yeah, and he was actually not so good on the psyche. Yeah, so typical white wing specialist. Okay, let's get not too close to these guys up there. The stormer doesn't sound too inviting. Well, now that something, something happened, spare parts. An empty beer bottle and some earth. It, it all looks a bit barren here. On the other hand, not necessarily barren. So, but this whole structure has been built, so it must be several years later. Pile of papers. Search that. Okay, these guys are walking around there. Okay. Well, maybe we go in here first. Okay, five bucks, so they still use the currency. Some more earth. Let's have a look here, right? So there was the guy coming over. No. We are so overloaded. It's it's possibly not the best thing to uh, you know to fight anybody, especially if we don't know what's going on here. This seems to be a quite modern building. Oh no, actually, it actually looks rather run down. Well then, let's have a look. Nashville's observation deck is no less interesting, besides the equipment housed here, ventilation ducts, weather, sensors, radio communications array, the deck is something of a promotional project. Here, at a height of 96 meters, 
Binoculars have been installed, allowing one to view almost every part of the dome in clear detail. One might rightfully claim the East Point observation deck is much more comfortable, but only here can we feel on top of the world. Everett Dobson, so you are under the dome. 29th of January, 74. Oh. Okay, so yeah, we are on top. Alright, uh, that's actually pretty cool. Binoculars. Let's check out the binoculars. There's no one here, apparently. This binocular mounted on a rigid, rigid tripod is pointing south to the central sector of the dome. Yeah, let's look into them. Into the binocular. Oh, interesting. It's hot in the south and almost everything is drenched in sunlight. The red sands are covered with white spots. The binoculars lens flash with merry flecks of light. Only after we focus do we understand there's nothing merry about the view. There are bright pieces of the spire everywhere on the dunes where it fell during the incident. Oh my goodness. The spire is destroyed, so it, that must mean that... Uh, does it mean that we are co totally isolated inside the dome? Hmm. On the borders of the dunes we see squat buildings. Looks like the roadside picnic cafe is still intact. Oh nice, okay. And that's also good because there's our stash, right? Our special box. Almost directly behind it rises the dark funnel-shaped silhouette of Maelstrom and through it we can see faintly... We can faintly see the ruins of Concord Station, okay? Let's look at the familiar cafe. Amazingly, the roadside picnic seems to have prospered since the incident. We see new buildings, a cleared road, movement and lights in the windows. The place is at the very were, uh, at the very edge of Maelstrom's zone of influence, but neither the residents nor the guests seem to be concerned. Okay, interesting. Let's look closer at the ruins of the spire. When Maelstrom got unleashed, the spire broke down, apparently. The cyclopean structure collapsed, partly sliding down the dome to its foot partly falling inward. Large pieces of the structure litter the sand dunes for miles around. Mm -hmm. Let's look more closely at Concord. The dark ominous mass of Maelstrom cloaks the field of view in this direction, but we can occasionally see structures through rare gaps. That's all that's left of Concord Station, partially demolished by the same Maelstrom, partially destroyed by the fallen debris of the spire. Okay, and let's look at the Maelstrom. We refocus the binocular to capture Maelstrom in the frame. The sight is overwhelming. Slowly, even lazily, it spins. Chains of greenish lightning periodically flashing across the surface. What can a man do against such power? Do we have a map? Yes, we do. Oh yeah, the dome map. Ah, that's the Maelstrom. Oh, that's cool. That's the dome. Wow. Not sure why there is basically... Maelstrom is here and then there there is still something like going on here. Like what this is. Because if this is some form of whirlwind, then this here should be all around, right? But yeah. Uh, picnic neutral zone. The Nashville facility. Junktown slums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no one here. Okay. What's in the big box? It's locked. Well, let's lock pick it. Aha. Uh -huh. Rifle cartridge. But this is something that uses handgun cartridges, but yeah. Uh, binoculars facing west. We stop near the binocular. The half-erased inscription on the orange case reads Western Sector. The only highway leads west. The, the hot air rises from the white, shimmering salt marshes, distorting the image. The light stripes barely visible against the background of white sand, precisely delineate the contours of an object, something too rectangular to be part of the landscape. The C-12 Nashville object has to be somewhere there. Or rather, that's left of it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the salt marshes. 
Snow is not uncommon to the desert. Polar latitudes and high plateaus have no shortage of frozen water, but the sparkling white spots we see to the west are not snow. Salt marshes cover a significant portion of the sector, instantly disappearing behind the barely visible border shining in the air above. Perhaps there was once an inland salt lake there, maybe the result of some large-scale forefathers' experiment? It is unknown. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom the binoculars in on the mysterious stripe over there. At first it seems we are looking at a reflection of the salt marsh hanging in the hot air, but the object seems too accurate to be a mirage, too massive and cut out. It's difficult to say what it is. Objects in the west of the dome haven't been thoroughly studied, and plans to explore them have been postponed to the far future. Will people ever get there? Locate Nashville base. Recalling the route to C-12 Nashville, we point the binocular at its ruins. We can't see much from this vantage, but we are able to make out the neighborhood and even the parking lot. Well, actually, it can't be too can't be too far away, right? We just came out of the uh, out of the cave, uh, and that uh, is actually more or less below the Nashville area, right? But well, it's a bit weird, or maybe there has been some form of uh, shift of the Earth or whatever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously, because uh, the the cave was. Uh, must have been relatively close to the um, to the surface, although we don't really know how long the distance was that we crawled through. But we saw the daylight, so it must have been must have been pulled up or something. Well, let's examine the parking lot. Fragments of concrete and rock cover the parking space. It's turrets, security booths, disabled and abandoned truck trucks. All are crumpled, torn to shreds, scattered on the asphalt, which is beginning to grow over. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if it's not a total uh, jungle there, that means that not too much time can have passed, right? Or someone, someone had uh, abandoned it just recently or something. So, and what about the surrounding area? There are abandoned cars and minivans outside the parking and cargo area and along the road leading to Nashville Base. Looks like Curiosity brought a lot of people there after the incident and destroyed them. Hmm. Yeah, let's stop looking at Nashville. Anything else here? This is... the elevator is out of order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why can't we look there? Well, ah, oh, there's a supply bar barrel. Nothing for us, but this here is the binoculars facing north. Judging by the worn-out pads on the eyepieces, this stationary binocular pointing to the north of the dome is quite popular. Mm -hmm. Let's look into the binocular. Well, it has been uh, popular. Huh? The observation platform is located in the northern sector. Its borders, as well as closer objects, are clearly visible through the binocular. Judging from the complex road junction nearby, there was once a major settlement there. Behind the ruins, a smooth, long arc rises from the sand. It doesn't look like a creation of human hands. And is this the arc? Or there? Let's look more closely at the road junction. A couple of years ago, we would have seen scurrying workers, asphalt pavers and road rollers. The junction would have been part of the newly developed infrastructure of the northern sector. But now the spire has collapsed and distributes no cargo. No one needs a modern city with a cargo terminal, storage facilities and wide roads in these parts anymore. Oh, oh, oh. Let's focus on the arc. At first we think it's, it looks like a small mountain range. I'm still not sure which one it is. The regular squat dune emerges from the sand and stretches along the horizon, sometimes hiding behind cliffs and hills. But after refocusing the binoculars, we can see the structure on the surface. Fragments repeating in a strange but perceptible pattern are either an object or construction details. Okay, let's try to look at the dome. Somewhere in the sands of the northern sector, far beyond the arc overlooking the dunes, we can see the border of the dome. Its glimmering is barely visible behind the shimmering of the warm air, 
but we know for certain it is there and it will never let us out. Hmm. That's, that's certainly not ideal. Okay, and the last binocular is facing east. Its lenses, shaded by visor, shimmer blue and yellow. The east abounds in signs of civilization. We can see almost intact roads, rare trade caravans and buildings piled into settlements. Closer to the north of the sector is a complex of large squat buildings surrounded by a slum belt. Oh. If memory serves, the Magellan bunker is hidden there somewhere underground. Mm -hmm. Let's look closer at the Magellan base. Of course, it would be great if we could see the underground bunker from the observation platform, but alas, the modern binocular doesn't yet have that capability. We have to rely on imagination, visual, visual memory and old maps. However, we do manage to get a glimpse of a small parking lot surrounded by a concrete fence. At the far end of the side, we can see a stocky building with airtight doors. This must be Magellan. Parking lot. Here, this one. This is probably the parking lot. Underground. Yeah, let's look closer at the complex. This is definitely a city. The buildings look strictly functional and are crowded close together. And any kind of aesthetics has been a sacrifice for durability, although the dome has its own standards. Take a closer look at the slums, the barracks and huts. Zone on the outskirts of the city looks quite typical. We see crudely fashioned construction materials, smoke from open fire, some rags flailing on the wind. All this is separated from the central settlement by a high wall and a sturdy gate. Hmm. Okay, well, people try to... You can stop sneaking, I think. People try to survive, huh? Old box? Oh, that's nice. A protective mask. The minimum equipment required when working with hazardous substances and relics. Yeah, that's a good thing. Oh, and now we are we are significantly encumbered. We could use something for our face, actually. Energy resistance 5, biochemical resistance 3. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we need to make a little stash for ourselves. And I think we are going to fight these guys. Although in this situation it would be foolish to pick a fight that we don't have to do. But... Uh, yeah. They might have something on them. Uh, that will be helpful to understand what actually happened. So I think we are not using our flamethrower. Or let's actually, let's firstly check. Let's firstly check what they actually, what their resistance are, resistances are. So this one here looks like a former silver wing. Energy resistance. So this one we can shoot with our laser pistol. Let's sneak up behind this column. That one. The Stormer has heat resistance, so like for our machine gun it should be okay. Yeah, okay, then well, the third one are there. That's a freezer. Oh, it says heat resistance, okay. The thing with our machine gun and the laser pistol, we should be fine against these guys. So apparently the, the psycholog uh, psychic phenomenon, let's put our stuff in here. Um, overtook a lot of stuff. So here we put everything like we are not using the flamethrower. Nor this one. No grenades, no food at the moment, just need half, 
Yeah. We have only two two shots left, or like four. And so here, this one, that one. Oh, two kilograms. Seventy-one. So I think the batteries that we just found a battery that is uh, usually rather heavy. Yeah, that's the weight. I would like to try out uh, the this weapon here, though, the pulsar. Yeah, and that we will see here now. So let's try that. We need a shift right now. Uh, let's let's actually let's try out. Let's try this one out. So this is energy damage. Uh, but I mean, it would be smarter to use the laser pistol, of course. Um. It does look cool. So we are just trying it out now. Right? Supersonic strike. Oh, that is cool. Miss this other one. Okay, she's she's under the influence of something now. Yeah, so Someone's these guys they are like the ones in the bunker. So what did this do? She's stunned now, that's good. Ah, it's a stun. Ah, yeah, that's actually great. It's very unfortunate that we uh, didn't hit the other guy. Well then, now that she's stunned, we actually we should be able to hit them nicely, right? So well, let's kneel down. Shooting this guy. Someone from the outside did it. Some outsider. Ready for combat? Well, I think the turn can't do much. Oh. Crit. So, but I like the uh, the area of effect thing here. It's all targets in the line of fire. Ah, yeah, that's actually yeah, that's really useful. Although, like, it doesn't make much, it doesn't do much damage. So, let us actually shoot her. Oh, she's not dying from one burst. Oh. Well then. Oh, we are frozen. And now we are scared. Minus 25 view radius, detection radius, oh, and the action points, okay. Yeah, I mean, of course, we need to use our laser pistol and the rifle to start with. And she's the one, yeah, who has got the energy resistance. And that's why shooting her with the machine gun is actually stupid. So, yeah, okay. Right. And then now they will kill us, I think.
frozen to the ground. Yeah, that's cool. So that's a freezer. Yeah, and that's actually what I would like to have too, like a freezing laser. And yeah, that's of course excellent. Um, frozen to the ground. Yeah, minus 100% movement speed, stuck in place. So that's certainly cool. And then we can imagine how useful that is to free someone to the ground, yeah, who's just a melee fighter or something. Um, so here we go. The long range. So she needs to be shot with the laser pistol. Energy resistance is low. It's actually, let's actually keep the machine gun there and let us use this relic. Yeah. I love to use the bab the apple, but I really don't like the precision. The hit our pre precision will will take. Yeah, there. And we could actually take cover behind this one here. Which would be smart, right? So like for three, so we can shoot once. Like there. And then we go here behind the column someone from the outside did it some ah! so now this dude will learn our machine gun we'll get to know our machine gun uh, let's crouch Kneeling position, just one simple shot. There you go. Ending the turn. So, taking cover. He's got some form of MP. Looks like an Uzi or something that uh, has like an, an fo a foldable buttstock or something. So, now we can shoot him like so. 59, that's not good enough. Yeah, let's shoot. So let's shoot three. Okay. Skipping the turn. We are still out of out of range from that one. The other one is coming in now, though. Oh no, she's coming from behind. Okay. But the electrical field worked nicely. Okay. Can we shoot her now? Yes, we can. Very good. Very good indeed. She's gone. And let us... What is going on? Why? Ah, we are still here. Okay. So, and then we have six shots. And this one... Is heat resistance three. And this guy... Has eight. So we can do a three. Oh yeah, that should be enough. Shooting this guy. There. Very good. Shoots us. We have frostbite. Oh, and now we are actually... Oh, we are frozen to the ground now. Okay. Uh, so... But she has the heat, uh, the heat resistance. So let us... 88. Hmm. Let's shoot her once. And then we are just waiting. Skipping the turn. Okay, so...
Now we take the kneeling position, although I guess we are we are probably not really able to bend our legs, but whatever. Burst shot. 88. There is outsider radiation everywhere. Someone passed through Keeping here turn. scattering their light around. Yeah, this is not looking so good. Are we actually the freezing, decreasing psychic resistance? We are distracted, frozen to the ground. Looked like we just took some additional damage from something. Eighty-eight percent. Someone touched us. Covered our place with their scent. And let's one, let's have one laser to shoot her down. There. Okay. Let's use first aid on ourselves. Good. Fatigue. Two hundred forty-nine. All right. So these guys, we can't scan them. That's a sergeant. So apparently uh, they have, they are better organized now or something. Some coffee. I'm still irritated that uh, we can't saving that we can't. Uh, take their equipment like their weapons and stuff but well it's just how it goes broken vega drinks vending machine seems the repairman hasn't got around fixing it yet perhaps there's something useful inside yeah let's have a look ah yeah some food that's good there are crates there where are crates ah, up here okay Trash bin, okay. Oh, that's good plastics. And this is where they were squatting. So apparently they were just uh, waiting here for someone or guarding the place or whatever. Another broken bigger drinks vending machine. Okay, 45 bucks, that's good. And unless uh, we don't have any other options to get food. So we need to survive on junk food, that's really, and, and cigarettes, junk food and cigarettes, that's really not a good idea. Electric equipment, or like here, there are trash bins. I mean, it must have been very nice here at some point. But apparently it has been taken over, right? <sighs> A secret. There are boxes there. Let's go to medkit. Okay, so and then... Let's actually... Go upstairs, like here. Yeah, it's all grown over, but it looks like it actually has been uh, has been taken care of for quite a while and pretty okay. There are crates. Diversions of for dummies guide contraptions plus fifteen. That's nice. Okay, good. A secret or plastics what do we have here a strange briefcase ah oh, yeah we can scan it
Rally case. Identified Kronos inventory. Aluminium case intended for storing and transporting relics without special marking made of aluminium. Pandora X model. Oh yeah, we need to lockpick it, but that's fine. And there's only relic dust in there, okay. And we're already fatigued. And, uh, no, we are encumbered. Well then. So, looking at the dome map. So, this is what we know. This is what we saw. There's a mirror, Jordan prior salt marshes. The picnic neutral zone. Nashville facility, Everett Road. The relic wall. Magellan station, parking lot and junk town slums. So, my thinking is we are going to go to the picnic neutral zone first because that's where we have our stash, which which means that we can uh, put our stuff there. Um, and yeah, we don't need to carry around all this crafting stuff here, right? That's just the simple truth. Especially also not all the ammunition, assault rifle cartridges, if we don't have an assault rifle for 3.3 .3 kilograms. Yeah, so, and uh, that was the prologue, I think. we. This is the real game now, as far as I understand it. And I have to say I really like it. It's really cool. That's uh, a really cool way also to introduce the game world. Let's get our stuff. And then, like a pack mule. Eh, uh, what are you doing? Go downstairs, please. And like a pack mule, we are going to go there, to the picnic. Yeah. However, now I really have to be more disciplined. Because I want to play some other games first that also suck up some more... Uh, space on my uh, hard drive because some other games are coming up yeah like it, like we, we need to decide we need to make a decision which uh, high quality triple a title or like the the triple a quality title uh, we want to play um yeah and if you, yeah stay tuned guys if you want to uh Participate basically in selecting the the oh, what's that? The car is crashed along black skid mark and trail of spilled oil delineate the path to its demise. Okay, so they yeah, and then probably the guy he had the brain damage or something. Yeah, brain brain hemorrhage, and then he made it. He crashed and then he just made it out of the car and there there he died very sad yeah so but I have to say like so far this game looks very very promising it's like really cool also I feel that you can really see that this is uh, based on on some real literature uh, the story seems really cool although of course it is kind of a uh, yeah classic old-school thing right so some phenomenon it's also like with pillars of eternity if we want to compare to that game as it's also in CRPG Pillars of Eternity, uh, where you have a certain event and find out that you are actually special. I mean, we didn't find out that we are special yet, at least. Uh, but I think this is like more pure sci-fi, which is really cool for me personally. Um, I really like it. We had a glimpse of what is possible, possibly, uh, when uh, when using this uh, the servo shell. And now we know that it's actually a worthy investment yeah, to be able to use one. Not sure where we get the next one, but I really want to have this bonus here for the learnability so we can negate our, uh, our malus with the perk here. The prodigy, minus 50 learnability. But otherwise I feel that the build, like our... Uh, our upbringing, like our development, is actually working nicely. So, like with the Renaissance person, that we get all of this because we had all our uh, attributes among five. 
Yeah, we are very, very brainy. And the only thing that is a bit sad is that I can't... <laughs> that I can't change the letter anymore. That's really irritating. And I'm, I'm not sure what they were thinking. That you could all, all, uh, only uh, write capital letters when writing your name. Um, but then, yeah, like later on, so you couldn't control uh, the uh, like check the the uh, spelling and then, then later on it's a normal letters yeah so that's certainly a weakness and we've encountered a few other weaknesses like I I'm not entirely happy with the uh, just save the game I'm not entirely happy with the kneeling position thing here I mean of course it's meant to be basically above yeah, um, but that's not convincing to me. So then, it would, in, in my opinion, it would be way better if you can kneel down, and that costs, of course, action points maybe. But then it also costs action points to get up again. But you can just stay kneeled as long as you want, because that's just the po the, the the logical thing. Or uh, thing. Also, you don't uh, see it if you kneel down, right? Like that. So that's just. That's just a bit sad, yeah. But otherwise, I feel that uh, it uh, this game has really a lot of potential, and I'm looking forward very, very much to it. But I hope that I can actually be disciplined and not play it for a while because I really need and want to uh, end some other stuff. Because otherwise, uh, yeah, if you know if you know my channel, if you see my channel right now, now on the. Uh, in the last phase of November um, you see that there are quite a lot of games going on like let's plays and uh, I mean I feel that it's okay if there are some breaks here and there but I've of course uh, my, my HD is uh, yeah it's kind of filling up um, and I want some flexibility as well yeah but also just to wrap up some stuff yeah. Like for example Wildlands, yeah. I already played it through with my friends. Uh and like the, the solo let's play. Uh yeah. It's maybe it's maybe not so interesting as I would hope for uh, yeah, for it to be especially as it's the Ubisoft formula, so things are like a bit repetitive to a degree at least, but yeah. Check it out if you want. And then like Wasteland I want to play first and Battletech needs to be finished as well. Um, yeah, but I mean this one here will continue. I would appreciate if you uh, share your thoughts on the game. I personally really like all the elements that it has. Yeah, I mean I'm also... I'm not annoyed with the fatigue. But it appears to be a little bit unbalanced um, if you consider that it costs 75 fatigue uh, to just lockpick something, yeah. Um, and then that enemies that use non-lethal stuff, they can just barely kill you very, very quickly, like we uh, noticed before. So I'm not sure if that is actually... A totally balanced mechanic but but maybe I'm looking at it from a wrong angle so but so please uh, just enlighten all of us if you have any thoughts there or maybe I'm doing something wrong I'm not sure but otherwise I really like the um, the skills so firstly it didn't look not like much yeah piloting medicine tech science criminal influence and survival but like with the abilities that follow yeah, that that makes for quite some variety also like that the weapons come with their with their different abilities and stuff yeah that's uh, really cool actually and we do see that uh, there is really some quite some variety here um in the means of weapons yeah and and the stuff we can uh, have and use so i'm quite happy there in that regard as well yeah, lots of stuff to loot. I personally love looting. Um, I'm really more the pack rat for that. We have two relics that uh, have some form of anti-gravity effect, which is a good thing. And by the way, we might want to put one in here again. So it's not too back-breaking. 
Yeah, and otherwise, uh, I have to say I'm looking forward to it, to play it further. But we'll take a break now. Okay then, so I would also appreciate if you click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, so never ever miss an episode again. So next time, bye bye.